Thank you very much. My name is Ansoy from the BBC. I have a quick question uh, for President Kagame. Um, as chair of the Commonwealth, um, I wonder what your priority will be, uh, especially in terms of upholding the values of democracy and human rights, given that there's been a lot of scrutiny on your country and the record of your government, and uh, critics have been pointing out the number of opposition leaders and journalists who are in prison. Uh, I wonder how, what your leadership of this uh, organization is going to look like uh, in the face of that. Right. Um... I think checking of facts is a, a serious problem with the, the very institutions we should have relied on to inform the public, the general public, the world, about some of these facts. Or whether the facts themselves or the interpretation of some of the things that actually happen. Now, let me start with the, the issue of values. Who defines the values? Or who doesn't actually have values? When people talk about values sometimes, it's is one part of the world that has assumed the sole responsibility and the monopoly of defining values. So the rest of us have no values. We've just to keep learning from these ones who define the values. And, and by the way, the danger also is it doesn't matter how you, long you take learning, you will never qualify. You will just always be branded somebody who has no values or who comes from a place where there are no values. So I want to put this case clear. Those from the north who always assume where BBC comes from, who always think they are the face of values, the rest have to follow. It's a big mistake, it's not true. We have values too, we here. In Rwanda, in Africa, we do. No question about it. Second, There are some of these problems we have had in our continent, in Rwanda. Those from the north who define or want to define values have been part and parcel of these problems we have been facing. Some of them have actually been the cause of the problems we face. But at the same time, like, like the genocide here that, that took place here in Rwanda, where one million people over were killed. Well, I remember, if you remember the serves you well too, I'm not inventing anything. The debate that went on at the UN it was like, you know, these uh, developed rich countries, those who define values, simply took it like, these are just Africans killing each other. These debates were in the open. But you think that is true? You think the divide that actually led to this genocide was just the creation of Rwandans? not the people from the north who actually divided this country, told the people to think of themselves as belonging to one ethnic group and the other to think as belonging to one another ethnic group and therefore they should kill each other. Not only are they different, but they should kill each other. 
Would you believe that? Would you tell me that the two, 20 million people, this is documented by other people, not by me, who were killed in the Congo, were killed by other Congolese in the old days of King Leopold? And you think all that just disappeared in a moment, then you had the savages coming over and taking over their own countries and killing each other, and then the others assume the higher ground, they are up there in the north and keep pointing fingers at those of us and think we have no values and we just uh, are there to, you know, we don't respect freedoms, we don't respect human rights, we, sure, do you think so? BBC, you think so? You take time, you broadcast and from morning to evening, you, this is literally just abusing people. You're abusing Rwandans, you're abusing Africans, you values, values, values. What values do you know, my dear sister, on behalf of BBC? So I want to assure you, there is nobody in the BBC or anywhere else there about who would be holding values better than we do here in Rwanda. Except if we just want to cover up the mistakes of the same people who want to define these values for us. Or really tragic mistakes of things they have caused. So when you are saying that, you may tell somebody else, people who don't have time to think or who don't have a history that, where they have struggled with these complications, yes, they will, but here, those of us who have faced what we did, who have gone through what we did, we take our responsibility. Of course, genocide could not have happened just on the hands of others who brought it to us. No. We, Rwandans, have a responsibility. We, we have our share of the blame for it. But there are others who should take responsibility for that. So I, I just want to let you know that these issues of upholding values and so on, as far as I'm concerned, as I know, as far as the ones are concerned, we don't need any lessons from BBC or from anyone. I, I, I tell you this with firm conviction. So, democracy or people in prison you're talking about, there's nobody in Rwanda who is in a prison that should not be there because you have a justice system that is actually functional and is fair. Let me tell you something instead. Actually, there are people who are not in a prison who should be there. There are no people who are in a prison that shouldn't be there, but there are people who are not in a prison who actually should be there. And I'll explain to you if you want. I know, for example, I've been seeing uh, uh, journalists uh, writing all kinds of things. Take somebody, praise her or him, and make them uh, champions of all kinds of things. That's fine. I wish these people are making them champions of their own situations, if, that's, if they wanted them, but not of our situations. And I give you some details. And what I meant when I said what I said. Take an example who is always written about and people who have been here even during this chogam and they were visiting. There's a woman called Ingabire. 
victoire, whom BBC and others want to always sing about being the face of the opposition, of the, okay, fine. And this is one I was referring to. She's not in prison now, but should actually have, should be in prison now. She was in prison, she committed a crime for which she was tried in the court of law. She was actually sentenced and imprisoned. The government, the president, under the prerogative of the mercy, president has that powers, actually this woman was released from prison before she served her full sentence. And it wasn't because she was not guilty or whatever, I'll tell you something else which shows double standards, which lead to these things you were asking. She was tried on the basis of evidence that was provided by European countries working with our own justice system. You see, so it wasn't just done here. It was done between us and some European countries who provided evidence corroborating with that with the evidence we had and us on the basis of which she was tried and sentenced and put in prison. Now, but some people decide to make that person an angel of freedom and democracy and something like that. Where, where does it come from? But she's out there, she's not in prison. But this I'm saying, she would actually be in prison if we hadn't just forgiven her. Okay, we forgave her to be out of prison so that you can pick her and pump her and praise her. Okay, that's fine. If that's, uh, if that serves, but I wish it was serving something good for the country. That's okay. Then you have uh, another person whom uh, the very people I was referring to picked, praised, made her a celebrity, uh, him, him a celebrity, you know, made the hero of, made him a savior of, but I, I don't know even what he saved. Now, when he faces justice, there is evidence, irrefutable evidence. He was tried in the court of law publicly. Nobody questions the facts on which the evidence is based. But then say, no, 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 you see, this one is, you know, a critic of the president. No, you first answer these facts before you talk about your, your things that you want to use. And in fact, this person committed this crime with many others. There are about 21 people in the same case, all of them who pleaded guilty and are implicating this person. And this person was at one time their leader. These are people who were armed, waged violence against families of Rwandans. People were lost, lost their lives. There are victims there. And then there is the one, you know, this person, you know, it comes from America, from Europe, and that this person, and in fact, what is interesting, they come and say, this person, we are not saying he's innocent, but he should be released. And then we ask them, we say, okay, if you think he should be released, how about these others who are co-accused with this person who are also in prison? So in other words, they are saying, this person is special. We've made him special, so you should not question that. And then we say, okay, fine. How about the victims? The very people, families that lost their people on the hands of this person. They can't answer that, but they keep insisting. So anyway, I'm just, let me try to cut. It was a loaded question, so I'm, 
trying to grapple with how to cut the answer short, but so the, the, the basis on which the these judgments are, are made is not necessarily right. It's not correct. Um, so I will let you make a decision at some point what to believe or what you should be making other people believe, but uh, I know by my answer in whatever way, maybe you're already framing a completely different story about what I said or giving it a frame in which I didn't put it, but that's okay.